Are you curious about the concept of double awakening and solo leveling? Let's dive in and explore this fascinating phenomenon. In the world of solo leveling, certain individuals have the extraordinary ability to awaken as hunters, gaining access to magical skills and superhuman abilities. The protagonist, Sung Jin Wu, is believed to have undergone a double awakening after a near-death experience in a dangerous dungeon, leading to a mysterious and exponential increase in power. Instead of a classic double awakening, Jin Wu benefits from a unique ability called the System, which allows for gradual, rapid advancement and exponential growth over time. In conclusion, double awakening and solo leveling refers to a rare second magical awakening that drastically boosts a hunter's power. But Jin Wu's experience with the system provides a subtler yet unmatched form of growth. Join us as we unravel the extraordinary journey of Solo Leveling's protagonist and his unparalleled rise to power. Exciting news for Solo Leveling fans. With just three episodes out, fans are eager to know if Baru will make an appearance in the anime. To put it simply, Baru is unlikely to appear in Season 1 due to the anime's pacing. However, if the first season does have two cores, there's a chance for Baru to debut in the anime. Baru is the shadow of the Ant King in solo leveling, known for his fierce bloodlust and loyalty to Jin Wu. So, while season the first of may not feature Baru, fans can look forward to his debut in future seasons. The pacing of the anime will determine when we get to see Baru in action. Stay tuned for more updates on solo leveling season one. Exciting things are in store for solo leveling fans. Introducing Iron, Sung Jin Wu's most controversial shadow. Iron, the shadow soldier, made his first appearance in solo leveling's Red Gate arc as the shadow of the renowned South Korean A-rank hunter, Kim Chol. Kim Chol's poor leadership led to the death of his group, sending him into a crazed state of mind. After Kim Chol's death, Sung Jin Wu extracted his shadow, naming it Iron, who became a loyal soldier and a fan favorite for his brute strength and loyalty. Iron's existence was erased after Jin Wu used the Cup of Reincarnation, making him one of the most controversial yet lovable characters in the series. Fans eagerly await Iron's debut in a potential second season of the solo leveling anime, guaranteed to adapt the Red Gate arc. Inter Welcome to the world of solo leveling, where the Statue of God holds the key to a deadly test in the Double Dungeon. The enigmatic smiling statue serves as a silent overseer to a deadly puzzle, where hunters must correctly interpret and act upon a riddle to survive. The architect is the real boss of the double dungeon, orchestrating trials and challenges to prepare a human vessel suitable for a powerful entity. The statue of God is a replica of the true God in the solo leveling series. The absolute being, a primal force from which light and shadow were born. Experience the thrilling story of Sung Jin Wu, the weakest hunter who gets the opportunity to level up and become an S-Class hunter. Unravel the mysteries of solo leveling and witness Sung Jin Wu's transformation in the face of unimaginable challenges. Solo Sung Jin Wu's Toughest Fights Ranked Sung Jin Wu vs. Stone Statues, the world's weakest hunter, stood no chance. Chapter 3. Sung Jin Wu barely held on to his life multiple times, but in the Cartonon Temple, his supposed death turned into a stroke of good fortune. Sung Jin Wu veers Blood Red Commander Igris. One of Ashborn's former commanders vastly outclassed him. Chapter 39. Sung Jin Wu was outclassed in every way and only won due to luck, even by his acknowledgement. Sung Jin Wu visits Demon King Baran. The last boss of the Demon Castle proved formidable. Chapter 86 Despite fighting against Baran with all his shadow generals, Sung Jin Wu proved weaker. Sung Jin Wu vers the architect. The creator of the system had Sung Jin Wu dancing in the palm of his hands. Chapter 125 Sung Jin Wu had to defeat the architect, but the architect was no easy adversary. Sung Jin Wu vs Thomas Andre. America's Strongest Hunter Was No Walk in the Park Chapter 145 Thomas Andre, also known as the Goliath, was a power-type hunter that many feared. Sung Jin Wu vs. Baru 
the most formidable of the Jeju Island ants, could defeat S-Class hunters with ease. Chapter 102 Baru possessed high intelligence and could absorb the powers of hunters that he killed. Sung Jin Woo vs. Three Monarchs One human vs. Three Monarchs was not an easy battle. Chapter 158 Facing three monarchs was no easy feat, especially as Raken, the king of beasts, was a terror with immense destructive power. Sung Jin Woo vs. Antares As a being that rivaled Ashbourne, Sung Jin Woo's predecessor, Antares was destruction itself. Chapter 173 Antares proved to be Sun Jin Woo's toughest adversary. Like and subscribe if you love solo leveling. The similarities between solo leveling and One Punch Man. Solo leveling pays homage to One Punch Man, featuring a similar training regimen and classification system for its characters. Both series explore the extreme strength and power of their protagonists, with solo leveling's Jin Woo being one of the most broken characters in anime history. In solo leveling, Jin Woo's new situation required that he do the same training Saitama did in order to fulfill his daily task. Much like a video game, Jin Woo receives various rewards for completing the daily task, and a very dangerous penalty should he fail to complete it. Both series feature the same classification system. While Saitama is an example of an overpowered protagonist, Jin Woo comes to realize that the daily task is probably his least effective means of leveling up. In various ways, solo leveling is exactly the kind of shonen power fantasy that One Punch Man parodies. However, they both have in common an exploration of the immense strength and will displayed by the average battle shonen protagonist taken to the furthest extreme. Solo leveling and One Punch Man share more similarities than you might think. From training regimens to overpowered protagonists, these series are a must-watch for fans of action-packed anime. The Solo Sung Jin Woo's Best Abilities Sung Jin Woo's rise from the weakest hunter to the strongest in the Manwa's universe is nothing short of amazing. His abilities as a necromancer, including shadow extraction and shadow exchange, make him a powerful force with a loyal army of shadows at his command. His intelligence, strength, speed, and invulnerability to attacks set him apart from other protagonists and make him an unstoppable force in combat. Stealth is a scarce skill used mainly by high-ranking assassin hunter types. The skill gives him a completely erased presence from perception both physically and magically, making him undetectable even to the most powerful hunters. Despite not being a skill he uses often, and Jin Wu not being an assassin-type hunter, Jin Wu is the ultimate assassin whenever he does use it. Jin Wu's near-impregnable defense and invulnerability to almost any attack is often overlooked. An example of his nigh-invulnerability comes to the fore in his fist fight against the Ant King Baru during the Jeju Island Raid. Jin Wu's stamina is measured differently than that of other hunters due to the system's effects. The growth of his stamina is tracked carefully through the series by the keys he received. At the end of the story, Jin Wu continuously fought all the monarchs for 27 years without rest. Sung Jin Wu's abilities as a necromancer are immeasurable, and some stand out from the rest due to their unique nature. His journey from the weakest hunter to the strongest being in the solo leveling universe is truly remarkable. Like and subscribe if you love solo leveling. Are you ready to dive into the biggest differences between solo leveling's anime and the manhua? Let's explore the key variations that set these two adaptations apart. The solo leveling anime successfully adapts the manhua and light novel without any noticeable negative impacts, condensing and contextualizing content to fit the animated style of storytelling. The anime introduces minor changes to certain scenes and characters, such as removing a scene where Sung Jin Woo asks for coffee and including early appearances of significant characters like President Go Gun Hee. The biggest differences between solo leveling's anime and the manhwa are subtle, but have tangible effects on the portrayal of the story in its new medium. Despite all the changes, the solo leveling anime lives up to high expectations, as none of the differences have any noticeable negative impacts. Experience the captivating world of solo leveling through both the anime and the manhwa. Which adaptation do you prefer? Solo leveling, the popular webtoon, 
reached its climactic ending after three years of publication and 179 chapters, leaving fans feeling emotional. The final battle between Jinwu and Antares was anticlimactic, with the rulers coming in at the last moment to kill Antares, leaving some fans conflicted and unsatisfied. Jinwu's decision to use the Cup of Reincarnation and go back in time to save his loved ones left him questioning his purpose and erased him from everyone's memories. The rulers feared Jinwu's power and gave him two choices. Move away from Earth or get sealed away, leaving fans split on the ending. The ending had Jinwu questioning his existence and whether he was even needed anymore, adding a layer of complexity to the story. The legacy of Solo Leveling continues with the release of the spin-off series, Solo Ragnarok, and the highly anticipated anime adaptation. Solo Leveling anime adaptation is now streaming on Crunchyroll with four episodes and going, inviting fans to experience the epic journey of Solo.